Okay, um, interesting. Uh, we're gonna have to wait for the uh, everybody to come out of the confessionals, or we can really go without them. Now, the, somebody said to me, "I missed a I missed a paragraph." I think Julianne, did you say that? Could you give that to me because I can't seem to find it here. No, 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 no. I said, could you give it to me? Now. Nah. I missed this one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is everybody ready for uh, fun and excitement? What was the last one that we did? You can yell it out. Okay, got it. Okay, so here we are. Um, the one I missed was uh, volume 13, 11, 8, 19, 22. And now this is really important. I know some people are going to get upset. But it's really important that um, we hear what Jesus is saying. Okay, so let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So in volume 13, 11, 8, 19, 21, Louisa, blessed are you, and all generations shall call you blessed. This does not take anything away from the Blessed Mother. It just shows you like daughter, like mother. She has this image and likeness of Our Lady. She's the firstborn. She's the newborn. And as you notice, it doesn't say when she was alive, she was called Luisa la Santa, Luisa the Saint. But now Jesus says, blessed are you and all generations shall call you blessed. So we have a card coming out. Jesus says this is what's going to happen. And as the little children of the Holy Divine Will, I think we can call Louisa blessed, echoing Jesus' words. Not officially, echoing. And this is something that's so beautiful because I don't think she's going to be canonized. Why? Because she's no good? No, because you can't canonize someone in the Divine Will. It's higher than that. So she will always be known as Blessed Louisa. Jesus says this, Louisa, blessed are you in all generations shall call you blessed. My arm shall make works of power in you, Louisa. When we pray with the relic card of Louisa, and I've seen it happen over and over and over again, when we pray with the relic of Louisa, great healings occur. And this is why I like coming here. Great healings are coming from this place, too. And when you look at Our Lady, the divine indwelling, that, to me, is the divine will. God is going to dwell within, inside and outside, as Jesus says. You, Louisa, shall be the divine reflection. Holy moly. You, Louisa, shall be the divine reflection. You, Louisa, will fill the whole earth. You, Louisa, shall make me God receive from all generations that glory that they deny to me. That's giving us a glimpse of Louisa and what God is offering to us. God is offering this to us. It's, Jesus keeps on saying to Louisa, this is not about making you a saint. 
A saint is volume one through volume 10. What Jesus is looking for, he says, I want you to share in divinity. This is what the priest says every day at Holy Mass when he puts the drop, a drop of water into the chalice filled with wine. Every day I look into that wine and I see the drop fusing and diffusing and that drop becomes wine. It's not oil and water. It doesn't separate. That's what Jesus wants for us. He wants us to share in his divinity. So every day when the priest says that at Holy Mass, we should be screaming inside, not outside, they'll think you're nuts, but screaming inside, I want to, be share, I want to share in divinity. I want what you, God, wants, want for humanity. I want to be in your image and likeness that you, that you gave to Louisa. When I look at Louisa, blessed is she. She's like her mother. She doesn't become our, her mother. I mean, each and every one of us, we sound like our parents, we look like our parents, we laugh like our parents, we walk like our parents, and, and then as we give them grief all their life, we, we really look like them. <laughs> That's just, the yeah, look in the mirror. I remember all my aunts, you know, all my aunts. I, my father was 12th of 14, and uh, I looked at all my aunts, and... Uh, they, they were all, each one, each one was, was a unique uh, person. But and, and when they all got to be my grandmother's age, they were all my grandmother. So it was really, it was really a riot. And then when, yeah, when they put my grandmother in the coffin, I, I really didn't recognize her. Yeah, so they put teeth in her mouth, shaved off her mustache, put her babushka down, her hair. <laughs> And I looked, I said, who is this woman? <laughs> she had really long, dark hair. She never cut it. It was always up, up in a little babushka. She was a really, she was a sweetie. She always prayed the rosary, always prayed the rosary. The rosary was her hand constantly. She, she was a prayer, a prayer. Okay, where we are today is volume 14, 9, 9, 1922. Binding your human will with my divine will, I, God, want to enclose all creation in you, Louisa. God did that with Adam. He included all of creation within Adam. And when Adam sinned, everything fell apart. Jesus and Mary come to earth, the new Adam and the new Eve. And now they have a newborn. And God now can give to Louisa, the firstborn and living in the divine will, everything that Adam rejected. What's coming is the kingdom. You have to understand this. This is, this is not another, you know, devotion. <laughs> he says, the final devotion that I give to my church before I return is divine mercy. Jesus, I trust in you. Three o'clock. Jesus, I trust in you. And now Jesus says, I want you to begin to live in my divine will. So listen to what he says. I want to enclose all creation in you, Louisa, making you take possession of my divine will. Now is the time that Jesus is asking us to take possession. I want to feel my acts, my love, my pains being repeated in you, Louisa. I, God, want my reflector on earth so that in looking at you, Louisa, I may, may si see inside you, Louisa, as though through a mirror, the creation that I created in heaven, that my holy humanity enclosed. And in the reflection of myself in this mirror, I may recognize creation in you. See, when we do our prevenient act in the morning, we say very clearly, I want... I want to be fused with you, triune God. And God goes, why? I want to be, he says, how are you going to do this? I want to, because the way you taught Louisa, to fuse myself with you, Jesus, Mary, and Louisa. God goes, good. Why do you want to do this? Because I want to embrace creation, redemption, and sanctification. And God goes, good. Why do you want to do this? See, it's, it's a dialogue that you're having with God every morning. And then, then you say, well, I, I want to enter into the divine will. And Jesus says, good. Why do you want to enter the divine will? 
And you say, I want to enter the prime act of God, the single act of God, the I love you of God. That's what the divine will is. And then God says, why do you want to do this? What's the reason? And you say, I want more of heaven and nothing to do with earth. God goes, good. That's why you're here. See, we're learning from Louisa how to pray. And that's when you begin to pray the rounds, nothing is as, becomes as important as praying the rounds. To pray the rounds, it's, it's heaven. Adoring God and loving God and praising God and thanking God and worshiping God it has nothing to do with earth. It's heaven. And he's asking us, he's pleading with us, what do you want? I have to give it to you. See, this is the danger of wanting something, wanting your human will. We said, no, I don't want my human will anymore. I don't want to do anything in the human will anymore. I want you, Jesus. I want to do everything one with you, fused with you in the holy divine will. I want you to gaze at my gazing, you to listen to my listening, you to speak in my speaking, you to dance in my dancing, swim in my swimming. I want you to be the Lord of my life in everything that I think, say, and do. And God goes, good. This is what I've been waiting for. The saints did their human will. And like I said, saints are pains. You don't want to be around a saint. I remember a good friend of mine, he was a saintly priest, skinny as a rail, and I was having dinner with him. I said, Father, why don't you have another helping? <laughs> he goes, look at me. And I went, he goes, why do you think I look like this? I said, uh, I don't know why. You don't want to eat? <laughs> and he says, he says, it's denial. He says, it's, it's a sacrifice. And I mean, he was a tough cookie, but again, uh, a saintly man. I mean, it would be heck to live with him eating a second, second meal every day with, with him around. But no, God is, God loves us. And if this is not about being saintly, good, or holy. It's about sharing in divinity. It's about embracing the true life of Jesus, the true life of Mary that they gave to Louisa. Now, this is so, so amazing. He says, I want to see my reflection in this mirror. I want to recognize creation, redemption, sanctification, as he goes on, in you. We shall be a continuous reflection. You, between you and me, I, God, shall make creation be reflected in you, Louisa, and you in me. I from heaven, you from earth. This is the mirror reflection sharing in divinity that i shall then then shall my love be content i shall see in a creature not only the image through holy baptism of my holy humanity but all that my divine divinity operated in it image and likeness the saints didn't have this the new era is the era that adam lived before the fall by 14, 9, 9, 19, 22, I, Jesus, want to breathe into your heart, Louisa, so much as to place in your heart all the love that all the rest of creation should give me. What comes out of Louisa is the love that God is expecting from us, from everyone, past, present, and future. So he says, my rest, this is the seventh day of the seventh year of the seventh month of the seventh millennium at 707 in the morning my rest cannot be perfect if i do not find the requital of the love that came out of me this is the time this is the time therefore i god want to find in your heart louisa the love that all should give me my volition shall make this prodigy in you, Louisa, and in your heart shall have a note for every human being, past, present, and future, that says to me, love. Who has done this? I haven't done it. Jesus is saying, Louisa has done it. Link yourself with her. Blessed are you, Louisa. All generations will call you blessed. When Luisa was alive, Luisa La Santa, let's go see Luisa La Santa, the, the saint. And Father Bucci said, 
Louisa is going to be known by the church as the saint of the divine will. Wait till you get to meet Louisa. A friend of mine, I don't know if you should bring this up, but a friend of mine um, had a massive heart attack, two heart attacks and two um, double pneumonia. And the doctor basically said, uh, there's nothing we can do. We could just help you, actually. But there's a reason for it. There's a plan. God's plan is going to be fulfilled. Let me clue you. It's going to be great. He says, therefore, let's see. Okay. Volume 14, 10, 27, 19, 22. Louisa, my daughter, you shall be my spokesman. You shall be my trumpet. You will call the children together to gather them this generation, to gather this generation. So beloved, so longed for by me, God. This is the generation. You're here not by chance. God has predestined you to live at this time. Listen to what he says. Louisa, you're the spokesperson. You're the trumpet. You're the call. Everyone together, to gather this generation, so beloved and longed for by me. Why? Jesus says, we are the ones that are supposed to bring the kingdom of God on earth as it is heaven with Louisa. Read volume 24. All of a sudden, the kingdom will be here. And everyone is going to say, how did it happen? How did this happen? And Jesus says it happened because of Louisa and the souls linked to Louisa. This is the generation. This is what's coming. Our job is to work one with Louisa. And again, he's teaching us how to forget about ourselves. No more using I, me, and my. We're, not, we're nobodies, we're nothing. God is the one we adore, we love. He's the one we praise. He's the one we thank. He's the one that we glorify. He is our Lord, our Savior, our Master, our King. He is the one we praise. We are nothing. He's everything. And in what God Jesus is saying, I want to give you everything in this great gift of the divine will. Sharing in divinity. Volume 15, 4, 28, 23. And just as my virgin mother Mary crushed the head of the infernal serpent, so do I want another virgin who must be the first possessor of the supreme will to press that infernal head again, so to crush it and debilitate it. The, the other word Jesus said was, you will, you will crush the head of Lucifer and it will be kaput, gone. In such a way as to confine it to, into hell that she may have full dominion over it. Look, look what Jesus is saying. A human has full dominion over it. Eve could have done this, but she didn't. Adam could have done it, but he didn't. So what Jesus has said, this is why on Holy, Thir Holy Saturday night we go, oh, happy fall of Adam. What Jesus has given to Louisa is to crush the evil one. A human. The Virgin Mary did it, of course. Mother of God, Theotokos. But now her little daughter is going to do it. We're going to do it. One with Jesus and Mary and Louisa. Evil is not going to have any power over us anymore. It's, it, the purity that Our Lady of America talks about is, is to live the true life of Jesus, the true life of Mary, which Jesus teaches Louisa to do. It's, it's amazing. He says, in such a way as to confine the demon into hell that Louisa may have full dominion over it and may not hit the devil, may not dare to approach those, that's us, who must live in my divine will. It's the same must as Jesus said to uh, uh, Joseph and Mary. Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? It's not a wish. It's, a, it's an actuality that has to occur. It must happen. There's no way out of this. This is why we are alive. Jesus is depending on us to do this. I can do nothing. 
Louisa does. Louisa can do everything. Jesus just shows us this. Link yourself with Louisa. How do you link yourself with Louisa? You read, you study, you put this into practice. Every time that you read, he expands our capacity to understand more. Therefore, Louisa, place your foot on its head and crush it. That's a command from Jesus. Made, brave, I did it. Listen to this. And it would bite itself more. And so as not to feel my, my touch, it shut itself up in the darkest abysses. The devil is going to be gone from this universe into the darkest abyss. I, I consider that a black hole where even light can't get out of. Volume 15, 7, 11, 19, 23. What great attention is required of you, Louisa, and that of the priests, of you in receiving from me, Jesus, like a second mother to me, Jesus, the great gift of my divine will, and in knowing all of its divine qualities and of the priests, by receiving them from you, Louisa, these truths from you, Louisa, as they read the book of heaven, so that the fia voluntastua on earth as it is in heaven may be fulfilled in my holy church. Don't Protestantize the divine will. This is the first bread. The priests are in charge of the second bread, the supersubstantial bread of the Holy Eucharist. The priests have the key to the tabernacle, not the laity. They are in charge. The bishop puts them in charge of the tabernacle. Jesus says he puts the priests in charge of the divine will. Don't fool yourself. Oh, but Father, there's no priests around. Don't fool yourselves. Jesus said to Louisa, Louisa, even if I started with 12 for my, for my church, if I have to start with 12 again, it will be 12. But he said it will be a, uh, 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 an army of priests. Those are the words of Jesus. Don't, you, see, our job is to present to the priest the divine will. Every one of us has pastors. Every one of us has uh, associates. And, and what we do is we go to our pastor and, and we say, can we do the book of um, the 24 Hours of the Passion? We sent the book, the 24 Hours of the Passion, to um, Mel Gibson. And in the movie, you see glimpses of the Hours of the Passion that are nowhere else written. I remember when they said, he turned the cross upside down on the ground, and they said, why did you do that? He goes, oh, I just felt it was supposed to be like that. That's from Louisa. The resurrection is coming. And we sent him, if you go, if you go to louisapicaretta.me, it's anything there is yours. There's other websites. It's all yours. It's all free. Download it. Put it on your computer. But we sent to, um, uh, what's his name? J.S., J -S, J -C, uh, Jim Caviezel, yeah. We sent him uh, the, the, all that Jesus said about the resurrection. And we hope he, they hope they use it. See, see it, it, don't Protestantize this. You know, I hear so many lay people teach the divine will, and I go, oh, my God, we're going backwards again. A lot of the bishops have heard the lay people talk and went, you know, this is not right. I don't want it in my parish. But each and every one of us get the role of the priest of the divine will, get the Vatican book, and the Vatican book is on sale. It's the only book that the Vatican wrote of someone who is not a saint or not a blessed. And they know Louisa. The title says it. The son, S-U-N, of my divine will, Louisa Picaretta. Padre Pio says she's the second son that will give light and life to everyone and everything. We're, gonna, we're going to dance. We're going to dance about what, what's coming. It's going to be beautiful. 517, 711. What, a great attention is required of you, Louisa, and great attention for us. We have a mission from God. I feel like a blues brother. We... <laughs> We, we're, we're on a mission from God. We are alive today to embrace this gift. Listen to what Jesus says. 
Great attention is required of you, Luis, and of the priests, of you in receiving from me, like a second mother, and me the great gift of the divine will, and knowing all its divine qualities of the priest by receiving them from you, so that the fia voluntas tua on earth as it is in heaven may be fulfilled in my holy church. Volume 15, 7, 14, 19, You, Luisa, are a life of mine. You, Luisa, are a life of mine. Can you believe that? And with my life, I, God, can do whatever I want. That's Luisa. It's always fiat. Luisa, go to bed and stay there for the rest of your life. Fiat. Luisa, stop eating. Fiat. Luisa, stop drinking. Fiat. Luisa, stop sleeping. Fiat. Why would Jesus do that? He says it right here. My life can do whatever I want. Why? Luisa, you are a life of mine. We want that as well. I don't want to be in charge of my life. I want to say to Jesus, my life is yours. Do with me as you will. God goes, good, I'm going to. And again, it's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, God is, God's going to take care of everything. And Jesus would continue his crafting of making me suffer. Volume 16, 8, 13, 19, 23. And if until now the creatures have enjoyed the goods of redemption, now they shall move to enjoy the fruits of the fia voluntas tua on earth as it is in heaven, as well as the lost happiness, the dignity, the nobility, the peace, all celestial. This is not human. Because we're not supposed to live human. We're supposed to live divine. I get a kick, we've got to save the earth. We got to save the world. Well, this world is going. <laughs> We're going to heaven. We're, this, to me, is a bus stop. And God is bringing us to heaven where we're supposed to be. That's what Our Lady said to Bruno in 1947 in Rome. He said, he said, she said to Bruno, time has now come to an end. She says, my children belong in eternity where they will enjoy the beatific vision forever. Well, the children of the devil will always be trapped in time and space and never be able to enjoy the, the, the beatific vision. That's our life. Now, if we want it. And so God has given us the how and the way we can get there with the book of heaven. He says, by doing his human will, will man may disappear from the face of the earth the dignity, the happiness, the nobility, the peace that's celestial. It's, we've been in, in misery ever since. And Jesus says, now that I've redeemed you, now that I've rested for 2,000 years, now I'm going to sanctify the world. And he says, are you ready to help me? And our response should be fiat. Let's go. Let's get this thing done. Because by placing man against the relation with my divine will, I, God, will give back to mankind all the goods with which I endowed Adam in creating him. Therefore, be attentive, since this is about opening a large field of goods for all your brothers and sisters. It's, it's a new beginning for humanity. The old is going to be thrown out. The kingdom is coming. The kingdom is coming. Volume 16, 11, 10, 19, 23. Then my divine will had its life on earth in my holy humanity by virtue of which I, God, form the redemption. Not only this, but by virtue of my divine will, I, God, laid myself over all the works of the human generations, sealing them with my divine acts. And I beseech my heavenly Father not only to redeem mankind, but that at the appropriate time, man might win the favor of our will again. That's now. As when he was created, as when Adam was created. So as to live according to the purpose, purpose wanted by us, triune God, that the will of heaven and that of the earth be one again. No more separation between heaven and earth. Therefore, everything was done by me, Jesus, the plane of redemption, and that of the fiat voluntas tua on earth as it is in heaven. Everything is ready for the kingdom. So what is God going to do? 
He's going to present to us the kingdom. What are we going to do? It's embrace it. Live it to the full. Volume 16, 11, 24, 19, 23. Since you, Louisa, are my little one, chosen by me, God, for the mission of the divine will, and you live in that fiat which you were created, I, God, want to make known to you the story of my eternal will, its joys, its sorrows, its effects, its immense value, what it did, what it received, and the one who took heart to, uh, took to heart its defense. That's Louisa. Jesus said, Louisa, will you help me bring the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven? I want all of humanity to do this. They don't want it. Will you do it for me, Louisa? And Louisa says, yes. What do I need to do? Go to bed and stay there. What do I need to do? Stop eating. What do I need to do? Stop drinking. What do I need to do? Stop, stop sleeping. Do you think it was easy to stop eating, drinking, sleeping? It, was, it, was, it, it killed her. And she lived, you have to understand, she lived, not a, like people say she lived only on the Eucharist. No, she lived on living in the divine will. She lived on the first bread, the bread that Jesus ate, the bread that Mary ate, the bread that Adam ate before the fall. And now God has given this bread to us how do we eat this bread? By reading, by studying, by putting it into practice. Feed yourself every day. Promise Jesus that you'll read. If you haven't started reading the calendar, begin to read the calendar. I, there's one lady in our prayer group. I said, read the calendar. Oh, Father, I, I like going through the volumes one by one. I said, well, read the calendar. Well, Father, I like the calendar. It's so much, it's so good, it's so important. I said, well, read the calendar. She goes, well, this is years I've been doing this. So finally she says, I'm reading the calendar. This is the greatest thing in the world. Why didn't I do it before? I said, oh, geez. It's like pulling teeth. Read the calendar. You read the calendar. It's not like reading the Hours of the Passion. It's not like reading, excuse me, the, the, the volumes from volume 1 through volume 36. It's, it's, you, in one year, you've read all 35 volumes. Volume 1 isn't in it because there's no dates in volume 1. Volume 1 was really volume 2. Volume 2 was really Volume 1. And what happened was the priest read Volume 2, which was really Volume 1, and he says, how did you get here? What, how did you get to this height of sanctity? And she, then she wrote Volume 1. When you read Volume 1, the Luisa Picaretta.me, it's, it's, um, she knows the dialect. I remember I went, went like, Kritura. Uh, you are a creature, Jesus would say. Well, the word creatura in Puglia, in that area of Luisa, was the baby that fell and is bleeding. Pick up the little creature. Help that little creature. Jesus sees us as hurt, bleeding, dying. And he is picking up the little creature, us. And he wants to heal us perfectly so that the kingdom can be established in us on earth as it is in heaven. It's just that word. I remember one guy said to me, I think I was in California at the time, he said, uh, I'm not a creature. <laughs> I said, well, no, it's, it's a little baby. He goes, I'm not a little baby. Oh, okay, well, the heck. God's in charge. Charge. Okay, here we go. Okay. Um, I want to make known to you the story of my eternal will, its joys, its sorrows, its effects, its immense value, what it did, what it received, and the one who took to heart its defense. That is Louisa Picaretta. Mary is the mother of God, Theotokos. She possessed the divine will, but her job was to help Jesus bring redemption to humanity. And what Jesus and Mary had to do is give this to a human Adam was a human. Adam wasn't the son of God. Adam wasn't the mother of God. This gift had to be given back to a human. And the human that they chose was Louisa. Volume 16, 120, 1924. Therefore, courage. This is the word of Pope Benedict when he became Pope. You must be courageous. The words of Pope uh, 
John, uh, John Paul II was, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. You must have courage. And remember that you, Louisa, are my little boat in my divine will. And the divine will is not a sea of water which has ports and shores where boats and ships and passengers make their stops and take rest, give themselves to amusements, and many passengers do not even return to the cross to cross the sea again. The sea of my divine will is a sea of light, of fire. This is love. The divine will is a sea of love without port, without shore. Therefore, there are no stops for my little boat. She must cross this sea of love, of light, of life, of fire, continuously, but with such speed as to enclose the whole of the endless eternity. This is the beatific vision where we're going to go. In each one of your heartbeats and acts in such a way as to connect them to the eternal heartbeat and act, which is the heartbeat and act of each one. And you, of you, crossing over all, shall do the round of eternity in each heartbeat of yours, Louisa. You shall take everything and shall bring us, triune God, all that comes from the divinity in order for it to give and to receive. This heartbeat, the blood goes in, the blood goes out. Your breath, your, the breath, air goes in, the air goes out. This ocean, the waves go in, the waves go out. This is all I love you. And God is asking us to participate in this, this universe of love, this, this ecstasy of love. But while it gives, it does not receive. Not, nobody is giving back to God and I love you. Oh, nice sun out today. It's really hot. It's really cold. It's really rainy. It's really freezing. It's really... Nobody's saying, thank you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. For every leaf on a tree, every blade of grass, every grain of sand, every snowflake, where we're walking blindly to all the I love yous, I does not receive. And my little boat has the task to cross the immense ocean of my divine will in order to requite us, triune God, for everything that comes from us. So if you oppress yourself, you will lose the attentiveness of the round. So Jesus says, you've got to be courageous. Don't worry about anything. And, and if, you're, if you're worried about something, if you're oppressed, you're not thanking God. You're not loving God. You're focused on your misery. The sea of my divine will, but feeling agitated by a speedy rounds of my little boat, shall burn you more, this, this fire of love. And you shall fidget more because of my privation. But if you keep praying your rounds, and this is, if you haven't learned to pray the rounds yet, uh, get the rounds like that. It's on louisapicaretta.me. It's free. Uh, pray. I, I love praying uh, the Easter Pentecost rounds because they go all the way to uh, the Feast of Christ the King. It's ecstasy. You, you enter into this. You enter into these words. You enter into this prayer. It's heaven. It's really heaven. You shall be like a sweet little breeze that while bringing refreshment to our fire of love, it shall serve you to sweeten the torment you suffer because of not being with Jesus. See, we should be suffering not being at church, not being at adoration, not being with Jesus. We should be suffering. If we really loved him, we would want to be with him every day, at least for an hour. Volume 16, 2, 5, 19, 24. <clears throat> Have you forgotten that I am, not only in your heart, Louisa, but in the whole world and from within you, Louisa, I, God, listen to this, direct the destiny of all mankind. I didn't hear Jesus say this to a saint. I hear him saying it to Louisa. I, God, direct the destiny of all of humanity through you, Louisa. Holy moly, who is this little one? Who is she that Jesus would say this? Volume 16, 524, 24. See then how uncreated wisdom wanted to pronounce it. Uncreated wisdom, God himself. 
as it were unable to say anything else but fiat. So much was this lesson, so sublime, necessary for everyone, past, present, and future. And this is, fiat is still in the air upon the whole of creation as preserver of my own works as though in the act of descending upon earth to invest mankind and to enclose mankind once again for within itself. Listen to what he's saying. He's, he's giving us hints continuously. This act is going to descend. It is descending. We're getting ready for the warning and the miracle, right? What is the warning? What is the miracle? What is the illumination of conscience? Read the book of heaven and it's there in plain sight. Read it. Listen to this, the next line. So that he may return where he came from. That is, having come from my divine will, he may return to my divine will. This is what Adam lost. This is what God is bringing back to humanity. In fact, it is my divine will, and all things created by me return to the same path from which they came so that they may come back to me more beautiful, more decorous, as though carried triumphantly by my own divine will. We haven't seen anything yet. When somebody says to me, oh, I'm living in the divine will, well, you're trying to live in the divine will. If you're living in the divine will, this is what's happened. But it hasn't happened yet. It's very close, though. So all that I have told you about my divine will, this has been my purpose, that my divine will be known and come to reign upon earth. And what I have said shall be. I, God, shall overwhelm everything in order to obtain this. But everything, everything must return to me with that word fiat. God said fiat lux, and he created the heavens. Mary said, fiat mihi, and the incarnation took place. Now it's our turn to say, fiat voluntas tua. May your kingdom reign in me, this dust, as it is in heaven. The fiat, man must say, and in all things, he shall have nothing but the echo of my fiat, the mark of my fiat, the works of my fiat, in order to give the goods that my divine will contains. And in this way, I, God, shall obtain the complete fulfillment of all creation. Everything's going to be perfect. It's coming. It's coming. It's very close. This is why I began the work of making known the effects, the value, the goods, the sublime things that my divine will contains, and how the soul, following the same road as my fiat, shall remain so sublimated, divinized, sanctified, enriched, as to astonish heaven and earth at the sight of the portent of my fiat operating in Louisa. Do you see what Jesus is saying? It's going to follow the same road of the fiat lux, fiat mihi, and she'll be so sublimated, so divinized, so sanctified, so enriched as to astonish heaven and earth at the sight of the portent of my fiat operating in Louisa. I hope you're hearing what he's saying. He can't say it any clearer than that. Because by virtue of my divine will, I, God, shall unleash new graces never given before, more refulgent light, and unheard of portents never seen before by humans. What's coming is going to knock our socks off. I told you that. I said that with some nuns. I said, sisters, this is going to knock your socks off. And one little nun goes, but Father, we don't wear socks. I said, well, God already knocked your socks. You're ready for this. So Jesus says, I, God, act like a teacher. When he teaches the science he knows to his disciples. If he teaches to his disciples, to his disciple, it is because he wants to make of his disciple another teacher like himself. 
so I do. This is what God is doing. As we read this, as we study this, as we put this into practice, we are entering into his likeness. If I sublime, excuse me, if my sublime lessons was my first word, fiat, the prayer I taught was the fiat on earth as it is in heaven. Now the fact that I moved on to give you, Louisa, more diffused, more diffuse, more clear, more sublime lessons about my divine will. It is because I, God, want the disciple, that's you and me, to not only acquire its science, but becoming a master of the divine will, to teach the divine will to others. And not only this, but to acquire all my properties and all my goods. This, this is God's goods. These are God's divine qualities my divine joys, my own divine happiness. I want you to acquire this, Jesus says. And he says, therefore, be attentive. To me, be attentive is to read. Be attentive. Listen to my faith. faith be faithful to my teachings. Never move from my divine will. God is offering this to us. He's offering this to us. Volume 17, 2, 15, 19, 25. Oh, how heaven delights when it sees the eternal will operating in Louisa. In fact, since their work, this is the soul's link to Louisa, are confirmed in the divine will in heaven. Oh, excuse me, these are the, these are the saints in heaven. They see their works flow within the divine act in Louisa. They feel their glory, their happiness, their joys being redoubled by Louisa. See, the saints did not do their acts on earth in the divine will. They did not do any living in the divine will. So by us repairing and redoing in the name of everyone and everything, their heaven doubles, doubles every time. Therefore, since you, Louisa, are the little daughter of my supreme fiat, I, God, recommend to you to leave each act of yours pray to the eternal waves of my divine will. You are the you are the animal that's being preyed upon by my divine will so that these waves reach the foot of our throne in heaven. We, triune God, may confirm you, Louisa, more and more as our true daughter of our divine will where we may grant you the characters of grace for all your brothers and sisters, all of our children. She's doing this as Adam was supposed to. Adam, we, we, we were supposed to follow Adam, but when Adam fell, we fell. Now Jesus has a human that is doing this, so therefore we can rise again. This is, this is glorious. 517, 517, 1925. My daughter Louisa, to what, uh, to what you have said on fusing yourself in my divine will, Another appeal must be added that effusing yourself in the order of grace in everything that the sanctifier, the Holy Spirit, has done. If you go into the, the, um, the room where the pictures are, uh, Hope made a picture of the Holy Spirit and this fire that's coming and Louisa. Uh, that's, that's the next thing that's coming. You're going to see this, this burning love of God, of, of Jesus and Mary coming upon the earth. And, and no eye has seen, no ear has heard what's coming. It's going to be so beautiful. For, for, for us, it's going to be ecstasy. For those that hate God, it's going to be wailing and grinding of teeth. That's why Our Lady said, it's going to be good for some, but it's going to be bad for most what's coming. Don't be afraid of what's coming. Be in the state of grace. It'll be ecstasy. He says, She's, Jesus says, in everything the sanctifier of the Holy Spirit has done and shall do for those who are to be sanctified. More so since while we, the three divine persons, are always united and operating, if the creation points to the Father, redemption to the Son, the fiat voluntas tua shall point to the Holy Spirit. And it's precisely in the fiat voluntas tua that the divine Spirit of God shall make display of his work. And you, Louisa, do it. When, on coming before the Supreme Majesty, you say, I come to requite you in love for everyone that the sanctifier does and for those who are to be sanctified. That's us. We are going to be sanctified. I come to enter into the order of grace to be able to give you 
the glory, you, Lord, the glory, the requital of love, as if all of humanity had made themselves saints, and to repair you, Lord, for all the oppositions and all the lacks of correspondence to grace. And as much as you can, you, Louisa, search within our will. This is what Jesus is saying. For the acts of grace of the Holy Spirit, the sanctifier. So as to make his sorrow your own, as well as his secret moans, his agonizing sighs in the depths of the hearts, in seeing him so unwelcomed. And since the first act that the Holy Spirit does is to bring our will as the complete act of their sanctification, do you see what's coming? It's going to be the complete act of our sanctification, this great outpouring of the Holy Spirit that's coming. And seeing himself rejected, he moans in inexpressible moans. And you, Louisa, in your childlike simplicity, you say to the Holy Spirit, Spirit sanctifier, hurry. I implore you, I pray you again, make your divine will known to everyone so that by knowing your divine will, they may love it and may welcome your first act of their complete sanctification, and that is your most holy divine will. That, that prayer is ours. Pray it every day. My daughter, we, the three divine persons, are inseparable and distinct, and in this way do we want to manifest to the human generations our works for them, that while being united among ourselves, each one of us wants to manifest individually his love and his works toward the creatures. Volume 17, 629, 25. Therefore, your death, Louisa, shall tear the veils that cover all the truths that I, God, have spoken to you, Louisa, and they shall rise again. Listen to what he's saying, like many sons such as to dispel all the doubts, all the difficulties with which they seem to be covered in life. Volume 18, 10, 10, 1925. Now we are waiting for you, Louisa, to die upon our triune God, the other, the, uh, the other knee, giving us your human will. We, in seeing it dead in our hands, this is Louisa, as if no longer existing for you. This is our human will. You shall give, we shall give you the gift of our divine will, and through you, Louisa, that is through the will of ours given to you, Louisa Picaretta, our fiat shall return to live upon earth. This is God's promise. And, and one more, we're going to do one more uh, before we, we stop. Volume 18, 12, 6, 1925. Man is the new heavens. We are the new heavens, the new earth that's coming. More than the heavens above, it can be said that each creature is an animate star, that which the first man, Adam, did, up to the last one who will come. Everything was to be in common among them. So Adam was to possess not, on, not his own strength alone, but the strength of all. All goods were to be in common among them. My divine will, more than electricity, was to bring the bond among them and the consummation, excuse me, the communication of all that is good and holy. And even though each man was to do his own office and occupy himself with different actions, since all were to start, this is, this is what we said about the, the prevenient act, all were to start from the prime point of my will, the single act of God. All were to be converted into light. And therefore, each one was to be a light for the other. You are to be lights to me, and I'm to be lights to you. Everyone is supposed to be. Remember, you are the light of the earth. This, what you, this is what's coming. Therefore, my sorrow in seeing this heaven of creatures messed up was so great as to be incomprehensible to the human creature. Once my divine will was removed, that binds everyone and links everything, he entered disorder, confusion, disunion, weakness, darkness. Poor heaven of the creatures. It can no longer be recognized. And only the living in my divine will shall reorder this heaven again and will make it shine with new light. And this is why I tell you that I want to find everyone and everything in you, Louisa. Where are we? We are in Louisa. This is what God has done. 
my will, primary act, first act of God of all celestial and terrestrial creatures shall bring you the communication of all their acts, Louisa, and you shall remain bound to them and they will remain bound to you, Louisa Picaretta. So the living in my divine will encloses everything and everyone. Therefore, be attentive, for I want to give you the greatest thing that exists, but I want from you great things and highest attention because you, the one who, who God, the one who gives so much, much, wants to receive much from you, Luisa Picaretto. So we'll end there. And if anybody can find my cross, it would be really great if you gave it back to me. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We'll continue with the uh, uh, confessions. Can I make a couple of sure, go ahead. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Um, the first one is Monday morning mass is on your agenda as 7 o'clock. It's actually going to be 8 o'clock and it will be open to the local parish, uh, St. Gasper as well. So you might see some people here that you didn't see the rest of the weekend. Um, I do need to give you a couple safety notes. Um, the side of the hill out here is closed. Please do not cross the barrier tapes. The concrete's in terrible uh, shape. The grass has holes in it dug by animals. You can walk across there and trip and fall, so it is closed for your safety. If you want to get to the water from the spring, it's in the font that we just built out here, which is actually much closer to the actual spring than the one on the side of the hill. The side of the hill goes through about a hundred year old metal pipe that we know due to inspection is falling apart. So who knows what's in the water when you get it off the side of the hill. But when you get it right here, it's literally just six feet uh, from where you're drinking it. So that's, I wanted to give you that, point that out. And please do not go into the pools to wade. If you want to bathe in the water, get a bucket of water and pour it over yourself. That's, that's going to be the bathing here. But do not go into the pools. They are very slippery and they are dangerous. Um, and if you end up in one of those lagoons down there, we'll never find you again. Um, okay, tonight the doors will be closed at 9 p.m. Um, tomorrow we'll open the doors at, at 8. And after Father Tom is done, there will be one tour slash presentation. It's going to be more of a tour. I'm sorry, more of a presentation than a tour. And we will meet over here in the west transept of the chapel. Um, it'll take about 90 minutes, uh, unless you have a lot of questions, and then it goes longer. Tomorrow, the doors to this building will be closing at 3 p.m., so just plan accordingly. I want to thank you all for being here, and thank Father Tom and all the other priests who brought the sacraments uh, and brought uh, good and holy teachings to us. So thank you very much. So uh, those who didn't get to go to confession, remember, be blunt, be brief, be gone. Okay, God bless you.